Greetings, royal family, and welcome to another message by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe Beit Noon Sophie. Yudhe Wavhe. Now, royal family, this message was taught many years ago by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe and is being presented to you today by Yahweh's royal priesthood. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at Yahweh's royal priesthood. www.yahweh144 zero 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 dot com and also royal family join us at the university of yahweh where classes are designed for the godhead visit us at www.universityofyahweh.org also, Royal Family, listen to our weekly podcasts by the University of Yahweh, found on most podcast platforms. We look forward to you being there as well. Enjoy, Royal Family. A victim of unethical teaching. You needed me in your life. You not only needed, you need me in your life to, con to correct all of the unethical teachings you have been a victim of. When you're not conscious of this reality, you have been unable to protect yourself. whole nation of people have been beguiled by wicked, unethical teachers who sit in high places, who sit in places of authority with the power to send other wicked men after you to put you in jail if you don't bow to their will and their command and their subpoena and their call. They have even ruined innocent men. And if you try to be a leader, hmm? yeah, they'll get you, boy. They, they know the bus. Our leaders. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, they, see, they will put you in jail for thinking about some gold plumbing. And you don't have to steal no gold. Just they say you thought about it. <laughs> That's wicked. But see, when you have those kind of thoughts, they don't have to prove it. They just say they you you thought it. So you go into jail. And when you're individualist, you know, you, you be riding high and you be thinking, man, I'm, I got, I'm smart, I'm educated, I'm clean, can't nobody bother me. See, these unethical people will show you a thing or two. Won't they show you a thing or two? Oh, they, they get after me, but see, I'm still standing because I'm not alone. Yahweh is with me. You need my man behind you. See, my man is incredible. My man is unstoppable. <laughs> my man cannot be arrested. My man can't be subpoenaed. 
And my man gets after anybody that gets after me. My man will contend with you if you contend with me. My man is Yahweh, the creator. You need my man. He gave me the right system. The rules of conduct. He gave me the right and the wrong of the matter, the good and the bad of the matter. Ethics implies high standards of what? Honest and honorable dealing. Think about this. Ethics is a secret teaching. <laughs> Morality is a secret teaching. Moral principles are secret teaching. And you have to be showing a good character, walking around with good character, to be invited to join the brotherhood of those who learn moral teachers in secret. And then once you learn the secrets of morality, you have to keep it a secret. So there's certain men that don't have to worry too much about going to jail. So they know goodness from badness. They know right from wrong. They know ethics. And they practice it. When you practice this, when you practice righteousness, that's your garment and your shield against Satan having power over you. Oh, it's, it's a protection. I teach my disciples, if you're driving in a 30 mile per hour zone, drive what? 29. Whatever the signs say, do under it. And if you get stopped anyway, say, yes, sir, officer. Be, um, be humble, be honorable, and be honest. Because, see, I've seen my people put in a trick in my life. I've seen them stopped by unethical police officers who were mean and wicked and say, nigga, what's your name? You get ready to tell the other, other cop there, don't say a word, nigga. I would say, boy, you hear what I say? What's your name? You look at this other one, nigga, you better not say a word. If you say a word, I'll beat your butt. <coughs> the other one said, if you don't answer my question, I'm going to beat your brain. That's between a rock and a hard place, but you got to make up your mind what you want to do with your life about that time, don't you? Because, <laughs> see, I've seen niggas beat to the ground behind that one. If what's your name, you go to talk, the other one hits. One asks him again, what's your name? He won't say nothing, he hit it. I watch my people beat to the ground, just like that. And then you go out and you're going to talk bad and tough. They love to call back up. In this city, they have even beat up black police officers. I think they killed one or two. They've done it in other cities. Show the badge. Know that's who they are. But see, that doesn't mean too much to unethical folk. <laughs> Your protection is to be ethical. In Yahweh. <clears throat> Ethics implies high standards of honest and honorable dealing, and it deals with the methods used, as in business, the profession, or even on the personal level.
it puts you in a position if you want welfare in this country, it puts you in a position where you almost have to lie. I mean, you just got pregnant and you, you tell somebody, I don't know who that is. You may not, but I mean, I understand. <laughs> you may have been laying with two or three men at once. You might not know. <laughs> this unethical society teaches you to have one man to pay the rent, car note man, clothes man, food man, and a husband. <laughs> and you don't know who the baby is till you get here. Unless you bought the unethical teachers of a doctor that cut your insides out. Or bought it. You got so afraid till you bought it. If the baby come here and the husband say, well, I don't remember nobody looked like that in my family. He took way back. Kid took way back. <laughs> Make you feel nervous, right, brothers? Unethical country. <laughs> now, what I have shared with you thus far is the basic definition, the working definition of ethics so that you have some idea of what we're dealing with. Now, the root of ethics is found in the Bible in the Old Testament. And it brings up the question of Lucifer. Lucifer was a bright and morning star, a bright man in heaven, one of Yahweh's leading angels, and he was black, blacker than a coal, and he wanted to be worshipped, and he wanted to be Yahweh. He was jealous. So he started, he, he seduced a third of the angels of heaven and went to war against Yahweh. And of course, going against the Creator, he lost the war. And when he lost the war, he was cast down to the earth where Adam was. Where we had been given the garden and all we had to do was dress and keep it. In the meantime, Yahweh had already performed an operation. He knew this was coming off, so he performed an operation on Adam and come up with Eve. So she was hanging out in the garden, too. And you ask, well, why would Yahweh create heaven and then allow, being God, allow Lucifer to even come about in the first place? Was that ethical on Yahweh's part to allow such a thing to happen? He allowed war in heaven and then he cast him out and here come Lucifer causing war in the garden. Seduce Eve, who seduced Adam. Lucifer knew the laws of Yahweh and approached Eve with the law. And she went to talking to him in Genesis chapter 3. And since she listened, everything that Yahweh said would happen if you eat of the tree of good and evil happened. So she had sex with Lucifer and produced Cain. Adam produced Abel with Wars have been on earth these last 6,000 years as a result. Confusion, individualism, greed and lust, fear, superstition and ignorance, disease, destruction. 6,000 long years. We, the children of Israel, the children of Yahweh, the sons of Yahweh, have been catching hell for 6,000 years. from unethical rulers in all colors. 
We've had 6,000 years of experience of unethical rulership. Yahweh gave us the promised land, Canaan. A hundred years after we were in Canaan, we were living a peaceful life, tending to our crops and our herds and our cattle and our animals. And the heathens around us seem to have been a little jealous. Talking about the roots of ethics right now. The traditions of Israel, that's us, was not the camel riding nomads of the desert. Our traditions were different from the camel riders. These camel riders were nomads, wild ass men. <laughs> nomads. No special home. Just roam from place to place like a wild animal. You know how the animals, when the season change, they go north and season change again, they go south. Well, nomads follow an animal. They have a mind like an animal. <laughs> Yahweh gave us Canaan. And these nomads were our enemies. They came destroying our harvest and our herds. Let's look at Judges chapter 6. Verses 3 and 4. Judges, chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. And so it was, when Israel had sown, that the Midianites came up, and the Amalekites, and the children of the east, even they came up against them. Verse 4. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. <laughs> 